everyone, it's Coley Voyles, and I'm sitting here today with uh, Mr. Andy Glover from Gentiva Hospice. Uh, Andy, welcome, and I appreciate you coming down to talk to us about this uh, charity, uh, I guess a camp. Uh, we're going to get into it a little bit, but before we do, um, Andy, I want you to talk, talk to us a little bit about hospice and what you guys do. Andy is with Gentiva Hospice, and uh, he is uh, one of the chaplains there for Gentiva Hospice, and and uh, I, my hat's off to you guys. Uh, hospice, I, 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 you know, my, in my mother's, through my mother's uh, battle with cancer, uh, you know, at the last stages, hospice came in, and I tell you what, they were just a, they were answered prayer. Uh, yes, sir. I appreciate you letting me be here today. Uh, I've been with hospice for uh, Gen Team for 12 years, and I pastored for 20 something, 21 years before then. And I always saw myself as a full time pastor. Then my father in law got sick, and we come home to take care of him, and I started working with hospice, and I, I don't plan to go anywhere else because of what we do. We care for people at such a very intimate time of their life, you know. Nobody wants to die. I, right. I, I know we're going to die. I don't want to, though. I love my family. I love being here. But when we do, it's just a blessing to have people like our nurses, our home health aides, our social workers, our, uh, our whole staff that cares for every part of your family and the best of our ability. That's and, right. And we are in our office. I've been in the Bainbridge office for six years, and in the last, uh, we hadn't had a new nurse in four years. That's how long wow. our, our nurses are hanging with it right. and doing such a good job. And uh, it's just, I think, you know, it's just there's so many uh, advantages. The the most disappointing part of it is, is that, you know, you meet some great people, and mm -hmm. and then you meet them at the end of their life, and you think, wow, it's been great to know them before, but. What keeps us going as a chaplain, I realize that this isn't, when they say goodbye, it's not the end. Right. You know, they're, right. they're starting the new page of their new chapter of their life, and one day I'll start that chapter, but right. until then. Right. But, but because of what happens, our body decays, our body gets weaker as we grow older. You know, when I was 20 years old and I heard somebody say that, I thought, I'm never going to be like that. <laughs> <laughs> but I learned now that it, it does. Right. I get up a little slower and walk a little slower and run a whole lot slower. Oh yeah. That's so, right. uh, yeah. And, and got a few aches and pains. So, but you know, I just thank the Lord for what we do. And you know, the beautiful thing about hospice is, is it doesn't cost anything. Right. You know, it's uh, supported through our Medicaid, Medicare taxes, and through Social Security tax, different funds of government funds. And and if a family doesn't ha doesn't qualify for that, or doesn't have private insurance, then we still take care of them just like mm -hmm. they got just like anybody else. So there's not a lot of medical places out there that will take care of you if you can't pay us. Right. And right. so that's the beautiful thing about it. So. Well, I know, uh, you know, like I said, I, I, I went through it for a couple of years with my mother in the last stages. So you, it gets to the point where, you know, a family member just can't manage. And uh, that's where hospice comes in and, and uh, you guys can start. How far out do you really start with, uh, with, with the family? Well, uh, we can't go into the family in that home until the doctor signs an order. Right. Now, uh, if a family member calls us and says, we're, we're at that place, we can't take care of our loved one, well, then we ask them what their doctor is. We call their doctor and ask if it would be okay. And then he'll give the order. We'll go out and evaluate them and set it up. Generally speaking, for us to enter into the home, the person has to have less than six months to live. But now, as we both know how that works in the God's hands, mm -hmm. there's no guarantee. We've had patients on hospice two and three years. Right. But as long as we can document that they're still having some sort of decline, and people that are diagnosed with cancer, because cancer is fun, a funny disease. Sometimes you get it. I, we took care of a man one time that he had an ache in his knee. They op operated. He had cancer in his knee. The air hit it. It spread all over his body. Two months later, he was passed away. Mm. And then there's other people that get diagnosed with cancer, and it appears to be the fast cancer, but it'll go into a remission time. Mm -hmm. So, and, and we'll still stay in there with them as long as possible, and uh, unless it, and then if we believe that it has totally went into remission, we'll send them at our expense and have a CAT scan done or something like that to make sure. And if it it has has totally went into remission, we 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 uh, discharge them. But you know what I've noticed? That's not always a happy time because our people get to loving our nurses sure. at home health. Aid. And dependent on them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And, and you know when you're a shut-in, 
It's a wonderful thing to see somebody knock on your door, especially like our friendly nurses that they love on the patient and all those things. So, right. And then they get to see me once a month or twice a month. And so, I don't know if that's a good thing. Uh, I try to make them laugh. <laughs> <laughs> I can't compete with the nurses. <laughs> that's, right. that's right. Now, Andy, you were telling us uh, when we first started the interview, uh, you were you are a pastor, have been a pastor, and you're a pastor now. Now, where where are you? Uh, where's your church? I pastor a very small church called the Life Connection. It was formerly an Assembly of God, but it was uh, they came out of the Assembly about ten years ago. Mm-hmm. And ironically enough, the la- when I got the phone call asking if I'd come be a fill-in pa- a preach for them, the lady called the wrong number. And then I went there, and, <laughs> and though I've been there seven years now, so uh, but uh, mm-hmm. yeah, and I love it. I love their wonderful right. group of people. But I, I realized that. You just can't take care of a large church and do this job too because right. it's a very demanding job. Right. And we cover ten counties. Yesterday I was in Camilla, Thomasville, and right. tomorrow I'll be in, you know, Blakely and uh, Fort Gaines. So we, we cover a large area. Mm. So it requires a lot of my time, but I mm-hmm. love it because I get to meet people that I wouldn't normally get to meet. Right. As I said, you meet so many wonderful people. Oh, yeah. And uh, in my lifetime with the uh, hospice, I've met the guy, a guy that he worked on the Doolittle Raiders planes, you know, because they originally put brass struts on those planes because they were going to originally land them back on the carrier. I've met multiple World War II vets, pilots, gunners, and infantry. I've met men that was there at D-Day and things like that. It's just an awesome honor wow. to meet those people. Well, I was going to, I was going to get there, you know, being a chaplain and, and a pastor and, uh, I mean, you, you walk into some, some really touchy situations, uh, you know, in, in the lat- latter stages of, of life, um, a, an elderly person, I mean, you, you, you expect that day's coming soon. Mm-hmm. But some of the toughest situations that you've had to, to face um, with younger, younger children, um, Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, we, we took care of, uh, the youngest that I've ever been involved with was a 17-year-old girl that had cancer. And her father also was a pastor. And that was very difficult because, you know, we pastors, we pray for our families. And, right. we, and nobody expects to ever bury their children. Right. We expect our children to take care of us. So that was an awful time. You know, you can't help it because you get close to the people. And, you know, I've preached funerals for people that I've cried at their funerals just like I've cried sure. at my own families because sure. they're families. And it's just, it's hard, you know, because we know it, but it's still hard. I don't care mm-hmm. who you are. And and that's the key is if you get to the place where that you don't feel it, then you become plastic and you're not, you're just going through the motions. Right. And so that, so that's a, Well, I'll tell you what, I, I um, you know, like I said, my hat's off to you. My heart goes out to you in those situations. Uh, it seems like when when I when I get in those situations, I, I just I clam up. You know, I don't know what to say. You don't want to say the wrong thing, but you want to say something that would comfort the family or comfort the person you're talking with. And I tell you, it's it's I don't know. It's a gift. Well, now, that's ironic that you say that. One time I was in Dothan, Alabama at a meeting. We had a 20-year-old uh, young man that had uh, Hodgkin's disease. It had went in remission, and they thought he was completely well. It came back in, a, in about a year with a great fury. And I had, not, I had just started working with hospice, and I had not even met this family, but I'd heard about it. Right. And so I was in Dothan, Alabama. The, the young man and his family was in Dothan, Alabama. And... They had took, rushed him up there, put him on a ventilator, and the family had decided they were going to take him off the vent. And so I went up. They sent me out to the hospital. Well, I didn't even know this family. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know what to do. I felt very inadequate. And I got there, and I just stood there with the family, and I never said three words probably. And then the, uh, the lady called the office to, a couple of weeks later and commended my services. What services? She said, just his presence. Just being there. Just right. being there. Just right. standing there. So, a lot of times we are in a community type uh, society, you know. I laugh at people because I go to lunch with them and I'll tell them, put your phone up. I didn't come here to watch you text. I didn't mm-hmm. come here to watch you scan them. I want to interact with you. So, we're, we like to talk, we like to communicate. So, sometimes when you're dealing with a dying person, the best thing you can do is just stand there beside them. Right. Stand there right. with the family. 
because uh, when, a, when you're watching your loved one die, and if it's a painful death or if it's an easy death, they don't really want to hear you say they're going to a better place. They just want to know that they got somebody that's going to stand there with them and be with them. Mm. And, and that's what I love about hospice because, you see, once that patient dies, the other chaplain in the office who's a, who handles our bereavement side, he follows that family for a solid 13, 13 months. He connects. Wow. He calls them to make sure, and we make sure that person is not having complicated grief because people out there, they do have those times, that, you know, especially when somebody's lost a child. Or, right. But right. this is funny. We had a 102-year-old lady, and her grandson, who was 70 years old, he went through complicated grief. Now, you know, in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, your grandmother was 102, you're 70, come on now. But yet, mm -hmm. you don't know how people react. And right. so it's, right. it's, it's a wonderful thing to know that we're there connecting with the people, calling the people, and if that person needs us to go in and have a, a session with them, provide counseling, mm -hmm. find them help, find them volunteers, or find them support groups, whatever we need to do to help that person continue with their life, because that's what Jesus said, let the dead bury the dead. It didn't mean that it doesn't hurt us, it just means we still got to go on with our lives. We right, can't let right. that encompass our whole life, and some people do, so we're there for them the whole year. Right. Afterwards, and we connect with them, and that's why I'm here this morning. Is because we offer to the children of oh, the, we, we're gonna get of the there. community. Okay. We're gonna get oh, there. Sorry, y'all stay tuned right here. We'll be back with Andy Glover from Gentiva Hospice. There's a there's a, a camp for uh, children of uh, deceased parents, or one deceased, or, or both. Um, and Andy's gonna tell us a little bit about it uh, just in, for the next few minutes. And uh, y'all come right back. Uh, you're watching. Uh, Focal Point right here at uh, the Cool Challenge. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody, to uh, Focal Point right here. I'm Coley Voiles. Uh, sitting in with me today is Mr. Andy Glover, the chaplain uh, at Gentiva Hospice here in, in Bainbridge. And as uh, Andy was telling you earlier, uh, they, they reach out to 10 counties around, uh, around Bainbridge and, and offer their assistance and help in, in times of need. And uh, Andy, uh, you came to us today, and I know we've, we've talked about Gentiva Hospice uh, up front, but uh, you came to us today with, a, with a, uh, a, some information on a camp, and they do it every year, folks. We've had them on the, our radio and television uh, before uh, promoting the camp, and this camp is for children uh, who have uh, parents that have, uh, one parent that is deceased, or both parents in the tragic you know, event uh, or an aunt or an uncle um, is for children of uh, those those uh, relatives. And Andy, I'm gonna let you tell tell us more about it in detail. Okay, uh, it's my pleasure. This is a great thing that our company does. It provides this camp free of charge to any child in any community, wherever whether they're in a. We've had children come to the camp that were not even in our service area, but they found out about the camp and they had a they had lost a a father, a parent, a grandparent, an aunt, an uncle, a sibling. You know, it's just been a tremendous camp. And I've been participating in this camp for 12 years. And this is one of the highlights of our co company is this camp is totally free. And when a child comes to the camp, we provide them everything they have need of. We don't sell them nothing. They don't have a concession stand. There's no place for them to buy a soda because we give it all to them. We take right. complete care of that child. When that child gets into camp at two or four o'clock on Saturday, Fridays, excuse me, we take provide everything they need at no cost to the parent, the child, or anybody else. And this is the greatest thing. And as you were saying, now we want everybody to realize that yes, we do take care of the the hospice children. But it's ironically in the past that we've been doing this for 12 years is that about 75% of the children that come, their parents or their loved one they lost was not connected with hospice. You know, mm -hmm. We've had children there that uh, fathers has overdosed on drugs. We had one child there for uh, the weekend and you know, we don't get there and try to just have and have classes and therapeutic groups completely with them. What we try to do is identify anything that we can relay to the parent that this child maybe would need some additional help mm -hmm. because we had one child come that her father committed suicide in her presence. And when she got there on Friday, 
She was very reserved and reclusive. But by the time she left on Monday morning, we, uh, it was just she was a different child. And it wasn't because we did anything magical. It was just because she had the opportunity to come interact with 65 other children that all were going through a grief. And they, all those hers was a lot more tragic than a grandfather that died at 90 years old from right. cancer or whatever. But she saw that she wasn't by herself. And uh, so it was a, it's just a wonderful thing. We have took care of the children. Uh, a few years ago, the pilot in Savannah, Georgia, his family, he crashed and died. His three children attended the camp for all two three. years. Yes, all, all three, three of his children. We had three children that came that their dad was in Afghanistan, stepped on IED. Mm -hmm. And uh, they came for two years in a row. And so it's just a tremendous ministry that we right. do and we provide for the children. Uh, what we do is uh, now... They come to the camp. We have moved this camp from Niceville, Florida to Mariana, Florida, so it's a little more closer in proximity, and the facility is much, much nicer, and it's uh, just going to be great. They get there at 4 o'clock on Friday, and then we take charge of them, and then the parents come now and pick them up on Sunday where we have a closing ceremony. Before, we used to bust them home, but we decided we want to do something with the parents and the children together. We right. did that last year, and it was just a, a wonderful conclusion of the camp. And so we just, it's just awesome. And I thank God for this camp because children, I just wish more children would utilize it than right. we are utilizing right. it. Well, and, and awareness and exposure is is what you need and the, the name of the camp is Camp I Believe and um, we have some brochures here in the studio if uh, you, you, you would need it or Andy I'm going to let you give us the details on contact numbers of how they would uh, if, if they're in need if they've had such an event in their life how they, they can get in contact with you. Yeah. Uh, my, my number is 229-246-6330. That is the hospice office. Our office staff will answer the phone. Just explain to them you're calling in reference to Camp I Believe, and they will put you in contact with myself, or you can go on to Gentiva.com and put, put on the tab Camp I Believe, download the application yourself at home, fill it out, bring it to the office, because what we have to do is that we are screening the children to make sure that because, you know, sometimes we've had children apply that just had so much difficulty that we knew that wasn't for them. You know, mm -hmm. they needed some more help, and, and we try to find them that help, you know, because, right. you know, we can't. This camp is for fun. We believe that fun and friendship produces healing. And mm -hmm. these children have a great time. Uh, when they come on site, we give them two T-shirts for each day, so our children are all wearing the same shirt, and then... Uh, provide all the meals and have a lot of fun. And, uh, we've had horseback riding, paintball shootings, uh, dunking booths, you name it, we've done it. Right. Rock, rock, uh, rock wall climbing. Uh, our kids, one time a year, we got the trampoline that you bu bungee trampoline. Right. Oh, they loved that, man. Those sure. children had a blast. And uh, and then we do a talent show. We let the kids sing. And We've had children get up there and show us that they could dribble a basketball. You know, and it was a lot of fun because you see those children getting up in front of one another and, and participating. So it's just, I just can't say enough of good stuff about it. So you can get a hold of the office at, once again, at 229-246-6330. Uh, I have to look at the number because it's in my phone. And I got an <laughs> iPhone that says call Bainbridge and it does it for me. So, That's right. you know, right. anyway, but I want you to call. And if you know a child, whether they've been in hospice connected or non-connected, that could participate in this camp, we just want to... Uh, the and last year, we had the biggest turnout from of the offices that we cover, the Chipley, Panama City, Florida, and Mariana, Florida office. Uh, Bainbridge took the most children. Wow! There, and uh, I'd like to see that again this sure, year sure. and participate. And where do you get uh, children that's going to have such a good time and have so much fun? And how often do you find something that costs absolutely nothing? Right. Right. So. Now, now, um, you said it's down in Mariana. Uh, they can contact any Gentiva office. Right? Yes, they can. Any office you got, you know. But in uh, the Bainbridge office, Mariana office is. But the Bainbridge is in Dothan, Alabama. But the best thing to do if you don't know where office is is to go on the internet and go to Gentiva.com and look for camp. I believe, and you can click on it, and you can then it'll ask you what camp, and you'll put the Mariana or the Bainbridge area, and it'll walk you right through it, and it'll pull up the application and all the details that you'll need to know. And we're going to do it at the Florida uh, Baptist Blue Springs Baptist Conference Center. 
This is back on, if you're familiar with Mariana, Florida, it's the Blue Springs uh, Basin, and it's off of that big lake, and they, the uh, dormitories are extremely nice, and uh, it's set up, a lot of times, the one at the uh, camp that we used in Niceville, it was a 4-H camp, and it was a nice camp, but it was rustic. Mm -hmm. You know, the children wasn't really cool about that because the facilities wasn't as, but this one, the facility is really good. And the beautiful thing about this is it's all right there together. We're going to have canoeing. This year in the water fund, we've got a blob where, the, you know, if one kid climbs the tower and one sits on the blob and then it jumps off and the explosion ejects the other child. Oh, the children love wow. that. We're wow. going to have canoeing, got a swimming pool, and we're going to play a lot of outdoor games with the children. And so we just... Now, what's the ages? Seven to fourteen. Seven to fourteen. Now we do. Uh, if a child is six years, ten months, and you can tell us that this child's going to be okay by himself, right. then we'll take that child. We don't take children over fourteen because if you're fourteen years old and you're once you hit that fifteen year mark, you're not going to be wanting to walk around a camp full of ten year olds. Right. You know that's right. that magic number where you kind of start thinking you're grown so they'd be bored to tears right, so we right, stringently right. on the 14 mark but the 7 mark if we got a child that's went through a, a situation and uh, needs our help and so we want to do that one year we had a child there I, I've always got the because I've had a lot of experience with working with children through church and I just know how to handle children I'm, and some, one lady told me said, she said you don't even like children do you I said no I love them I said, but I believe that they have to follow the rules, mm -hmm. and I, I believe that, you know, but if you show, you can make people follow the rules, but if you do that with love, they will respond to that. Right. And we had a child one time, he's 14 years old, he was crossing that threshold of thinking he was grown, his mother had passed away, now he's living with his sister. And it was really funny because his sister came, dropped him off, and wouldn't let him get back in the car, because he did not want to stay. So they, <laughs> they gave Jacob to me. And, right. we, and we had the talent show, and so I got in there with, so they, I was spending time with Jacob, and I was kind of funny because I just try to play on where somebody's at. I said, Jacob, what's your problem? He said, I don't want to be here. I said, good, neither do I. I was told by my boss I had to come, and now they give me you. I said, so what are we going to do about this? He said, I don't know. He said, I, I want to go home. And I had to stay with him. Constantly, because he was threatening to just start walking. Walking, yeah, yeah. But by the end of the camp, because I got to know him, and his desire was to go into television. And so I got him. I said, "Well, we got a talent show coming up. Why don't you get some of the boys in our cabin, and you direct the skit?" And he got involved in that. And by the end of the week, by the end of the weekend, Jacob was really doing well, mm -hmm. and we had a big time, you know. And so I just, I, I just can't say enough of good things about what it does for children. It gives them that chance to interact. You see other children that have lost. I mean, you take a 14-year-old that's lost his his mother, and now he's not happy. I said, Jacob, you're not happy because your, your situation is now that your sister's now your mother, mm -hmm. and she's trying to tell you what to do, and you don't like that. You're, he said, that's right, I don't. I said, but you got to understand what she's trying to do. She's trying to Feel the shoes of your mother, right, and she's right. trying to provide for you what you need. And we got him to see that, but yet at the same time, I say, Jacob, you see that child right there? Uh, their daddy crashed in a jet. Mm -hmm. I said, and she was about the same age of him. I said, um, so what do you think? He said, we all got problems, mm -hmm. and it makes you realize that you're not in this all by yourself. Everybody right. goes through different things. Well, uh, Andy, it's uh, you mentioned earlier. There's 65 campers. Yes. Is that right? Uh -huh. uh, that's a total number uh -huh. to take. So, if you have a family member that uh, that you know of may not be in this area, as Andy said, they've they've come from different places outside of their their uh, coverage area. Uh, you can still give Gentiva Hospice a call and and uh, register your child uh, for for camp. I believe. Um, so Andy, I'm going to let you uh, tell them one more time, give them that number, and uh, Bob will have, put it up on the screen so we can, can uh, be sure they have all the information they need. Is there a website they can go to as well? Yes, gentiva.com, and it's Camp I Believe tab, and it will tell you all the information. Now, we also are offering like 13 more of these camps. Okay. So we've got them in Texas, Alabama, um, you know, down in southern Florida, you mm -hmm. know, so if you know of a child, if you have a relative that's, you know, that went through a loss, 
there's all kinds, our offices all over are providing these camps. This is just for the camp right here in Bainbridge. Now we've had, uh, which is in Mariana, but now we've had children that, people that said, well, I've got a child that lives, say, for, say like in Macon, Georgia, and they went and got them and brought them and brought them to the camp. You know? right. So right. You, it's, it's, it doesn't matter where you live if you want to provide the transportation to get them there. And uh, so we are, we're focusing on 40 children this year. We have had as high as 65 in the past. Mm -hmm. But as my director, because uh, that's one of the things we're doing is that if you uh, donate to hospice, to the foundation, that's what supports this camp. So if you uh, ever write a check to the hospice foundation, because in lieu of flowers or something, that's what we take out the money. And it's hard to fathom that just for our little camp, that it's going to cost us in excess of ten thousand dollars wow. just for that weekend because when you take and I and I just admire our company that we're willing to do that right. and for the children right. and be sure if you know anybody that get in touch with me uh, go to the website call the office I can come to you I went and talked to children it was kind of on the borderline of well because you know ch children are they're a little more social than maybe they used to be, but they still to send them somewhere they never they don't know anybody. Right. You're able to go in and connect with them and talk with them and so uh, help them. And, and I never seen one child. You know, I've done camps. I done church camps. I produced a church camp for 20 years that we took care of 600 children in a two week period. And it never failed. I'd have children that would have to go home because they were homesick. Mm -hmm. But in these, this camp here in 12 years, we have never sent one child home because he was homesick. Mm -hmm. By the time they got connected and the way we start the camp off with the fun activities, they're, they're immediately acclimated into it and just have a blast. Right. Yeah. And we have some great people that come year after year to volunteer as our helpers and counselors and directors. and So it, I've never, I can't say enough of good things about it. I just want everybody, the reason I'm sitting here with you, and I thank you mm -hmm. so much for doing this, because I want people to take advantage of this. You know, right. you know most time when you hear something that is for free, it's not really for free, and right. so, but this is. It's 100% free, and uh, just, if your child is going through anything at all, it's just a wonderful thing. Well, Randy, I, uh, again, I appreciate you coming in today. Uh, we've been talking with Andy Glover from uh, Gentiva Hospice right here in Bainbridge. They, they serve a 10-county area around Bainbridge, and uh, he's been telling us uh, more about the uh, camp, I believe, down in Mariana, Florida, for a child that's gone through a, a tragic event, lost a parent or a loved one and, and struggling. And uh, this, this uh, camp, as Andy was saying, is absolutely free. Uh, Andy had, has given you the number several times, the website, uh, gentivahospice.com. You can go on the I, uh, Camp I Believe tab and find out more information. So uh, with that, Andy, again, thanks for coming in. Yeah. And uh, if you have any questions about it, give Gentiva Hospice a call. They'll, uh, they'll give you the information. Uh, with that, I'm Coley Balls, your host, Focal Point, and uh, folks, until next time, we'll see you.